thought I'd still find you here. From upstairs. They want you on it ASAP. Sure they do. But oh, no, Alex. I'm handling five times the load of any other reporter here. They've even got me in the Monroe suicide trying to prove it's not. Enough is enough. I'm only human. That's never stopped you before. Take it. Why me? This story's full of controversy. Church versus state, anti-Semitism, civil rights, the war. This is tailor-made for you, Michael. A chance for your voice to be heard. Maybe even a Pulitzer. Take it. Strong boy. What is your name? Michael. Beautiful name. The name of an archangel. Yes, Sister Teresa Benedicta was here. Or too briefly, she was transferred from Germany. Right after Christmas, 1938. What can you tell me about her? <laughs> That's strong. <laughs> How so? It is believed there was a distinctive place in society for women and another just as distinctive uh, for men. Not equal, but, but equally important, significant. And that the two rested with their own proper dignity and grace can find harmony and fulfillment in a climate of respect. May I quote you? Only if you quote me. 
It is. Such beautiful eyes. Have you seen this photo before? I may have. Uh, the news desk at the Times gave me quite a few. Looking for Edis means to be consequent, young man. Committed to the truth, to the divine. Wherever that commitment may lead you, if not. Are you trying to scare me off? Yes. <laughs> I would be very afraid if I were you. Walking along the edge of a cliff. You better believe in gravity, or you have a sturdy pair of wings. And uh, what's the metaphor? Is God the gravity, or is he the wings? Young um, man. I'm giving you the name of someone who may teach you how to fly. Erna Bieberstein. The last surviving sister of Edith. When we were young, we four Stein girls would often sit here on the banks of this lake, staring into its depths, so mystical, so full of magic, as if we could glimpse the future. Like many German girls of our age, we, we felt that we were atop the lower line, looking out of the Rhine, dreaming of strong, fearless nights who would carry us off to a land of Camelot. And the dream became a nightmare, and the Camelots to which they would deliver us were fortresses of death. And I asked myself, were those Forstein sisters so different that their Camelot should be a gas chamber? No. We were not like so many German girls of our age. Not at all. You forgive the ramblings of an old woman, but you seem the type who understands. Your memories seem to be without bitterness. How can you be bitter about losing something which may have never been yours? I come here every now and then to remember how things were before and to revisit the dreams of those young girls full of life. Girls like Edith. We fled Germany in 36 after mother's death. To Paris and then on to Kafka's America. Edith and Rosa stayed behind. Tell me about Rosa. She was devoted to Edith, most devoted. <laughs> now they want to make Edith a saint. My mother would have loved that. Your mother disapproved of Edith's conversion. Mother was so proud of Edith in so many ways. Her mind, her education, the way she excelled in the world of men, but her becoming a Christian. Well, we were losing everything in the 30s here in Germany. You see, everything. Our jobs, our property, our dignity, our loved ones. Everything. And when a person loses everything, Michael, they cling to that which no man can take away. Identity. We were Jewish. 
and we would never allow them to take that away from us. When I was contacted by your paper, I mimeographed parts of Edith's diary. You had a diary? In German, of course. But they tell me you speak languages. Well, a few. You will use this with discretion. You have my word. Thank you. Oh. That was taken at Passover, Passover, 1893. Shows you how absolutely ancient I am. That's Edith and I down in the corner. How many were you? My mother had 11 children. Four were lost at childbirth, leaving seven of us brothers and sisters, Paul, Arno, Rosa, Frieda, Else, Anna, and I. Along with my beloved mother, Auguste, and Siegfried, the father who defined my youth in both laughter and tears. As a child, I was small and frail, and despite all the care given me, always pale. I rarely blushed, except perhaps when father was talking to God. I was entranced by the magic of that God, Lord of Israel, by his statue. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam hamtzi lehim min haaretz. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech asher. For me at that young age, in those first years of living, father could do no wrong. Belief in his compassion and just authority was central to my life. If anything was broken, father could fix it. He could mend broken toys and spirits. And this day was special. It was my birthday. Tabak, Vispo Arvit Roman, Vis Nase, Vis Hadal, Vis Halil, Vis Halosha made of which you break. No one could fix this. No one on earth. And no one in heaven. I 
after the funeral, we Steins got back to the task of living. Our relatives and close friends had a council of sorts. And when the men were finished, Mother announced to their surprise that she was a merchant's daughter and despite being a woman, had all the traits necessary to run a business. And she intended to do just that. Having lost my father, and with mother so taken up by her work, I had no point of reference. That's why I needed God. That's why I needed to believe we were his people. I needed to be in his family because my own was falling apart. Without God, I would have been alone. Hello. A girl who had to fend for herself. Dr. Herbstreit, I am Edith Stein, grade six. Yes, yes, I know who you are. But what are you doing here? Your class has already been called. That is precisely why I'm here, Dr. Herbstreit. I do not wish to go to that class any longer. Oh, I see. And why is that? I suspect that it's holding me back. It's holding you back, really? Yes, Dr. Herbstreit. I feel I am intellectually ahead of the other children. And I feel I should be doing more. Oh, no. No need, Miss Stein. It would be irresponsible of me to grant you your absurd request. And now, immediately, please, find your way back to your assigned class before... Test me, Dr. Herbstreit. Test me on all of these books. Give me a chance to prove I'm qualified. That's all I ask. Very well, Miss Stein. But I'm afraid... You may regret your conceit most exceedingly. I came to thank you for the regard you have shown my daughter, Edith. She's most appreciated. Yes, I would think she would be. Though, um... I'm not at all sure if this is in her best interests. How so? My experience tells me that a girl who excels beyond her years is chasing a truth that may become irrelevant to her happiness. Yet, I've been told she has a nimble mind. Perhaps she will find out herself. Yet, despite my nimble mind, my taste was becoming obsessive. I needed to find an answer to the question of God. If he exists, why did my father die, leaving my mother to suffer so? But perhaps such questions are not for young girls playing with the notion of God, as if understanding the divine were as simple as learning how to swim. Isn't it safer, I thought, to just tread water or better, end the game before we drown. And as I reasoned so, that voice deep inside me, which had been so loud when my father lived, was silenced. I'm the God of your father, God had told Moses at the burning bush. And suddenly I realized that for me, God had died the day they buried my father. It took me years to hear God's voice again. Years of battle and war. Study the nurse. That's what it's all about here, you know, getting a grip. No, thank you. I don't drink. That's a word you mustn't ever use here, nurse. Don't. There's nothing you don't do here. We're in hell, remember? All of life's rules become Faustian. What an odd place to find a philosopher. On the contrary, hell is full of them.
You really don't drink, do you? <laughs> Did you think I was being polite? I won't be doing anyone any good sitting here. Drinking, will I? You won't be doing anyone much good out there either. Patching up soldiers so they are fit to point a gun for the next round of fire hardly seems worth it. A cynic too. How inspiring. That's all the Western Front needs. More world weariness. You'd know all about that, wouldn't you, nurse? You're here to redeem yourself, aren't you? If you can save a couple of us soldiers into the bargain, all the better. Duty calls, if you'll excuse me. War, Miss... Stein. War, Miss Stein, is not an experiment. They stop shooting at night, don't they? They are French. For them, the night is sacred. Have you had dinner? Not that this could be called dinner. Mine was purely a rhetorical question. Yes, I have. Thank you. The Red Cross trucks finally arrived with supplies this morning. Wonderful. Now it's safe to be one them. I see you've come prepared. You never know. You know why we're fighting this war, this time? The moon. French call it la lune, feminine. For us, it's masculine, the moon. Now, how could you ever find peace with such conflicting worldviews? You've thought this through, haven't you? Nothing we do here can even remotely be referred to as thinking. Because if we were thinking, we wouldn't be here, would we? You're wrong, you know. My motives for being here are not purely selfish. Yes, I know, your fellow man and all that. But compassion can wear thin. How so? The unexpected. When that happens, all bets are off. The unexpected? This, for instance. I should have known better. Men like you. Men like me, what? Good evening, Lieutenant. Enjoy your meal. You've been hit. Uh, guilty as charged. And you're losing a lot of blood. I still have my flask. I see you haven't lost your sense of humor either. This may sting. I assure you, one wastes precious medicine on a man like me. I never kissed a man before, you know. I know. How do you know? I know quite a few things, Mr. Oh. had gone to war to redeem herself for having lost her faith. However sophomoric that may sound. Well, did she? All of Europe had lost faith, Michael. Indeed, to this very day. God is being squeezed out of our daily lives. There's something you must see. When I was a child, this house of God stood alone in the beauty of nature. Yet now, the majesty of God is dwarfed by man's creation. I'm a progressive, Erna. I'm afraid I don't share your loss. Then you'd like Anna. Anna? Anna. Anna Reiner. She has a race car near Weinstadt. A phenomenon, she calls it. She raced it in her younger days. Not that she's retired or anything. The fact is, she's still one of Europe's best. Best of what? You like speed. <laughs> Edith, one of the first true feminists. Francis Clare really said that. Her words exactly. An odd turn of phrase for a lady of the class. I thought they disliked feminists. Nuns, God love them. 
This is such a baffling career choice. I don't know. Organized religion's always been a mystery to me. That's the whole point of it, young man. The mystery. I know what scares you. All those rules. Pray over here. Pray over there. Genuflect. Genuflect. Genuflect again. That was Edith's problem, too. She often sensed there was too much smoke. It's not enough of God's fire. Let me start it to begin. I met Anna at one of the rallies of the Prussian Women's League. Having been a nurse in the war, I was asked to be a guest speaker, to give a woman's point of view to that senseless death. But I had not anticipated the effect Anna would have on me. Take your notion of God, for instance. Or lack of it. You've decided there's no God just because the God you thought you believed in allows the world to be a bad place. But your method of reasoning is fallacious. The intellect will never lead you to God. Ideas of phenomenologist. Phenomenology goes back to Edmund Husserl, right? Professor Husserl. I studied under him. Oh, you believe that reality can never be purely objective? Exactly. A door isn't a door unless we can open it. God isn't God until you can feel him. And love isn't love unless it enters your heart. Shall we dance? Lips. Um, word 36. How is he? The bullet grazed the pulmonary artery. The next few hours are critical. He has a fighting chance to pull through. He strikes me as that sort of fellow. He is. Friend? Close? Closer than I had thought. May I? Be my guest. I was seized by his accessible personality. You are going to be my student? Well, I hope so. Uh, my young colleagues, dear ladies and gentlemen, what was the first thought that struck your mind when you read this sentence? As the sunflower tracks the sun, human consciousness strives after the truth. I spent the year studying with Professor Husserl and soon became his best student. Thierry Duchard, the famous French Catholic philosopher, he said, the human phenomenon. In his famous work, he deals with the humanity. If Kierkegaard's phenomenon is purely Christian, what is missing? Yes, yes, Wittgenstein? The metaphysical. Exactly! 
graduating with a PhD, summa cum laude, promoting me to a full professorship. Schnapps? Lieutenant. It's actually Captain now. Every time they take a bullet out of you, you're pushed up all right. Pray I never make channel. By the way, I don't believe we've been properly introduced. It's time. Hans. Hans Lips. But then you know my name. Awfully kind of you to inquire after my health and watch over me on my Are you sure it was me? Wounded soldiers often hallucinate. Not if the wound is to the heart. Besides, how many nurses does Germany have with your gorgeous brown eyes? And how many nurse steins did Germany station in Ponte Musso? So you didn't sleep at the hospital? Again, guilty as charged. You see, I was right. You patch us up, give us another gun, and send us back to war. This is all cyclical, isn't it? Until we die. I see you've mended well. Sarcasm and all. I never lose my sarcasm. I intend to take that to hell with me. It will give the devil and me a level playing field. Don't die, Hans. Is that an order, nurse? Because if it is, you should tell my commanding officer. He likes to keep abreast of things like that. Who can die and who can't. He's very tight at that white, always. I think one of us has to go to war, or the Kaiser will be very upset. Should we toss the coin? What happens now? I continued my lecture tours for the suffrage society. I was becoming famous. Recklessly so. How can they know what's best for us? We don't know what's best for them. We are equal in every aspect. Berlin sent a letter of inquiry, Edith. Inquiry? About what? Your active involvement in women's rights. They are worried. They should be. You are playing with fire. Edith. I know that's your favorite toy. But haven't you noticed that those people in government have beards? Some even longer than mine? What does that tell you? They are men. And they expect their women to behave. Is that it? The secrets in knowing which battles to lose in order to win the war. What do those bearded fossils know about the war anyway? Dear Schnapps, I think it was Thomas Mann who said that war is a cowardly escape from the problems of peace. So when peace does come, and they tell me it's inevitable as our side is running out of bullets, I hope I shall find a way to piece my life together with yours. I must see you, Schnapps. I miss you terribly. She loved Hans. It's clear, even by Adi's definition. They were made for one another. Isn't that easy, Michael? She missed him. Terribly. Love. That releases no beloved from the loving. Dante. Paolo and Francesca. 
I'm impressed. <laughs> Don't be. Only the deeply afflicted remember those passages. Entire? Deeply afflicted? Adi never returned from the war. Berlin sent a nice letter. Und an der Iron Cross. Surprisingly, some good could come of it. I wish I had your faith, Anna. My faith is tested day by day. Hour by hour. I have found there is no miracle cure for suffering. It is why it is called faith. Again, I wish I had your faith. Oh, but you do read it. I see it in everything you do. You are just too stubborn to admit it. For years you have been standing in front of an unlocked door. Why don't you finally open it and pass through? Christ has no body now, but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Teresa of Avila said that about the God who is the doorkeeper to my faith. Teresa of Avila? 16th century Carmelite nun. Quite a lady. Our ancestors were Jewish. Were they? That is her. Over the altar. But it's all so abstract, Tana. So it's mathematics. Until you have to buy groceries. This was something entirely new to me. People usually went to the synagogue exclusively for the service. But here was this lady interrupting her everyday errands to come to church, as if to visit a loving friend. Teresa of Avila. I had to learn more. Dios no se muda. La paciencia todo lo alcanza. Quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta. Solo Dios basta. The custom of speaking to God Almighty, as freely as with a father, caring nothing whether the words are suitable or not, but simply saying the first thing that comes to mind, without fear of offense, that is prayer. That is the truth of Christ. Anna. What if I were to become a Christian? If that is what you feel you must do. Feel, idiot. Remember thinking with the heart. I think it's what I feel. It might be my way back to God. What is it of God that you miss most? When I was a little girl, a 
as far back as I can remember, I worshipped my father. I just learned to walk, but I knew I was safe if I let him choose the path. Because whatever he did, no matter how small, he did out of love, unconditional love. He taught me the truth of loving. And now, Teresa has shown me the way back. You have shown me the way back. Um, why do I sense it does not make you happy? I've decided to give that lecture for the Prussian Women's League next month. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of visiting home on my way there. That's nice. It has been almost a year. A year this May. I never ceased being a Jew, you know. I had just lost my faith in God. And now that faith is stirring again. But I never stopped being a Jew. I know. It's important that you know that. Oh, I understand. Jesus was also a Jew. Of course. And he never stopped being a Jew. Even he did. You need her approval, don't you? But what if she does not approve? I'm giving this speech for the Prussian Society next week. Yes, Anna wrote me. I thought I might go over it with you. <laughs> Did you? Get some of your ideas. Mm. Muti, you've achieved so much. As a woman alone, I mean. In a world catering to men, I'm sure others Others have a great deal to learn from you. Learn? I don't know about that. I've read your speeches in the press. Have you? Yes. I don't know much about that speeches and all, but I feel you could be a bit more, well, politics isn't really the field, is it, for women. We'll be going to shul tomorrow, if you'd like to come. I would love to come. Mother, I would love to come with you and the girls. Good. We aspire to an anti-Semitism based on reason which must lead to the systematic elimination of the privileges of the Jews. The ultimate objective of such legislation must be the removal of the Jews in general. We, we all know who we is, the Christians. There lives among us a non-German alien race which neither wishes nor is able to sacrifice its racial character or to deny its feeling. These aliens are the Jews, Adolf Hitler. 
People are starting to listen to him edit. He's influential in Bavaria, and Bavaria is almost 100% Catholic. I would prefer you had no God at all than this one. I am ashamed of you, edit. Mother, this man, this Hitler, from what I hear, he's just a fanatic mother. Germany's had its share, of, but we're used to it. They come and go, and we survive. You can't judge Christ by the standard of these pigs. You can't judge me. Show me. Show me you are not one of them. My dear Schnapps, I have recently returned from war as it was useless to fight on alone after the armistice. I looked forward to hearing from you so very, very much. The thought of you had sustained me in that hell. Yet your silence is revealing. <laughs> I'm not yet sure what it is meant to reveal, but being an optimist by nature, I fear the worst. Please write. We must have same rights as men. They can't hide us in their homes. Cooking, cleaning, and give us no time. I believe in courage. I believe in power of empathy. I believe that each and every one of us has the moral capacity to participate in another's suffering. Every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. The fear of my own death is conditioned by another's fear of death. as we live together in empathy. So shall we die together. Professor Husserl. What an honor. Uh, could we step outside, Professor? Why, Professor? I have no secrets for my students. Very well. These gentlemen have come to escort you out of the class. They've come to escort me out of my class. For what purpose, Professor? You should have heeded my warnings concerning your radical speeches to the Prussian society. Merlin has asked that your professor should be revoked. On what grounds? Sedition. Sedition? Who do they think I am, Socrates? No. <laughs> no. They think you are Edith Stein. And that's entirely enough for them. And you can do nothing to stop this? I'm afraid not. My hands are tied. Then you know what it's like to be a woman. Observe the phenomenon, class. Observe it, Professor. What kind of country puts race and gender above human values and dignity? For that is the country your philosophy now serves. 
Phenomenology was a distraction anyway. Now I have time to focus on what really matters, which is the world is changing, Anna, fast. You heard the speeches by that man. What's his name? Hitler? He's a joke idiot. A random narcissistic maniac. I thought so too, Anna. But he's gained some control in the German Workers' Party. That's Anton Drexler's group. They now favor what they call non-Jewish socialism. It's a catchphrase. Politicians will say anything to get votes. No. I think Mother was right. The tide of bigotry is standing again against us Jews. What does that mean? For, for you, practically. I've been fighting for women's rights from within our ranks. I feel now I must do the same for my people. How do you mean? They say Hitler's movement is Christian. Perhaps Christ wants me to go further, to prove them wrong from within. Like Teresa of Avila. Do you mean become a nun? Edith! What about that fellow at the train station in Bali? Yeah, what about him? I don't know what happened to Hans. Edith was, was very secretive about that part of her life. I don't think anyone knows. Except the only other man who could read her soul. His name is Eugen Breitling. He's a, a bishop now, or some such distinction. I find it hard to follow Catholic hierarchy. The coats are of too many colors. You will find him in Freiburg. That is near the Black Forest. Your Excellency, Mr. Prager. Michael, welcome. We've been expecting you. Nice to meet you. Please sit down. Thank you. Mrs. Reinach called, telling us about your research for the greater glory of God, no doubt. Or the New York Times, whichever has a greater circulation. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, tell me, what would you like to know about our dear Edith? Okay, well, firstly, when did Edith Stein become Teresa Benedicta of the Cross? Let's see. It was December 1921, a Sunday during Advent, the second if I recall. I had decided to audit a Catholic Mass to experience it firsthand. I'd heard good things about a priest in Freiburg, a man named Breitling. Anna told me he was special, and I needed someone special. Et elevatis oculis in celum, at te deum patrem suum omnipotentem. Accipite et manducate hoc est omnes, Hoc est enim corpus meum. Baruch atach Adonai, Elohainu melech Asher. He saw me there in the back pews, a face he'd never seen before. I must have looked very intense because the good father couldn't help glancing at me off and on during the entire service. Fact is, I felt an odd and compelling familiarity with that service, with the words of that man, Jesus. I felt at home. I'm afraid it's not that easy, Miss Stein. Uh, people just can't come in here expecting 
To become Catholics, young lady? I mean, without you preparation. But I am prepared, Father. Test me. Ask me anything. From the Gospels, the Summa Theologica, the letters of Jerome, the imitation of Christ, the Catechism, the Confessions of Augustine. How can you even know about Thomas Summa Theologica? How can anyone understand ontology without reading the Summa, along with Anselm's Monologion and Brentano's study on Aristotle? Aren't they the cornerstones of Pope Leo XIII's encyclical Immortale Dei? Dear Mother, I send you this invitation to my baptism with a deep understanding of how difficult this transition must be for you. Know that this is not the beginning of a new life, but the evolution of my relationship with God. I'm not abandoning my faith, just maturing in my love for God. I found I have fallen in love with Christ. How can you explain the unexplainable? In 1453, the Jews of Breslau were driven out of the city. 41 of these burned at the stake after a Franciscan friar, John of Capistrano, unjustly accused them of desecrating the host. Whenever I cross the Blücherplatz, I can still smell the stench of burning flesh from all those centuries ago. And now you would become one of them. How can you be sure that one day they will not accuse you for desecrating your host? Teresa, Teresa, te baptizo in nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Corpus Christi. Amen. Dearest Mother, your letter left me in anguish. Those atrocities you speak of, though committed in the Church of Christ, are not of Christ. We cannot second-guess God based on the actions of man. God is more than that. Jesus was one of us. What are you doing here? If I knew you were in the market, I would have demanded equal time for evangelicals. Why didn't you answer my letters? I tried. I would start a letter and then realized I had nothing to say, except for small talk, and I knew you wouldn't appreciate that. Actually, from you, I would have accepted talk of any size. Small, intermediate, large. You'll find them a most amenable romantic. Is that what this is? A romance? Hans, my life has taken a few unexpected turns. I can see that.
He told me you'd never kissed a man before. Well, despite my obtrusive flamboyance, I'm also no libertine. I've actually fallen in love with you, Edith. I couldn't help that. I blame the bombs, but... the gorgeous eyes had a bit to do with it. And as is customary in such cases, I would ask that you become my... Hans, I'm thinking of becoming a nun. <laughs> you are serious, aren't you? I believe I have a real vocation, but my father, the confessor, has urged me to wait. Bless you. To be absolutely sure you understand. Which means you're not. And I don't need a priest to tell me that. I can see it in your eyes. Hans. You're not making this any easier. Easier? What do you expect me to do? Edith, you've just told me my only competition is God. What should I do? Grow a white beard? Give me time. How does 48 hours sound? Hans, whatever I do must bear total commitment to the truth. However, whomever I love, that love must complete me. I will never settle for anything else. Yes. That is who you are. May I, may I write you? Of course. Will you write back? I'm stubborn, you know. When I want something, I don't give up. Tell him that. Vocations really like that? Suppressing natural instincts? Union with God, Michael, is mankind's most natural instinct. There's a mountain nearby. It's called the Feldberg, 1,500 meters, an afternoon's hike for an experienced climber. But there's a section of it, the Katzensteig, it's called, the Cat's Trail. And you really have to be a cat to climb it, straight up and down. I'd almost summited the peak. June it was, 1958, when I lost my concentration. That happens, you know. The closer you are to the top, the more you take it for granted. One fourth step, and you fall. Like with mountains, you must never ever take God for granted. One fourth step, and you are suddenly living your own life. The same could have happened to Edith, you know. Vocations never easy, Michael. And I can tell you, it wasn't easy for her. Because of her mother? Well, there was that, yes. But 
there was something else. Someone else. Hans' lips. She never mentioned him again after she entered the Carmel of Cologne in 34. 1934. Hans vanishes from Edith's life. Hold on. Edith's sister gave me her diary. Diary? I'm afraid not. Erna sent me a copy a few years ago. I poured over it so often I almost knew it by heart, but there is no mention of Hans. Not after 1934. 1922 to 1934. Twelve years of waiting for what course her life would take. How did she get through it? We made a deal. She would write teach religious education and comparative theology and generally serve in the world until God gave us an irrefutable sign that it was time for her to enter the Carmel. A sign? What you would call shot heard around the world. Aufwachen, wach auf! Aufwachen! Your speeches, haven't you? You were there. (laughs) 
But I'm sorry, I had no way of knowing. That one speech? I heard it played over and over again on the radio. Especially on Kristen Mott. Over and over again until we fled. You are Jewish. How did you survive? I'm sorry. This is this is not about me. Are you sure? I can help you, Michael. Are you an exorcist? No, I am not, but I know evil. I felt too, Bishop. And there was no God there to catch me. Please. I have a report to deliver to my editor-in-chief. Let's stay on Edith. And his anti-Semitic rhetoric came to life like a poltergeist. The Nazis were especially keen to weed out the converted Jews whom they labeled traitors of their race. Thank you. The idea of Edith serving in the world had hit a brick wall. That world no longer wanted her. And she came to me in a fury. It's time you kept your word, Father. If Hitler's election isn't an irrefutable sign that I must enter Carmel, then you're just not paying attention. My people need me now more than ever. Look, Edith asked me to prepare this. She said we'd need it one day to distance the church from Hitler's madness. From the very early stages of their campaign, the Nazis' plan was to systematically tear German society away from Christianity and bend it to their own pagan beliefs. Consequently, a short while after Hitler came to power in 1933, Christian rituals were replaced by pagan ones. I had to put Christianity face to face with the truth. Why didn't you do something? Huh? You. The church. The Catholic church. This. People would have listened to you. Why didn't you do something? You could have said something. I'm listening. Come on, speak. Speak to me. Tell me why. This is where I do much of my meditating. For my fate and that of my dear Christ. Why didn't the church do something to stop a systematic and wholesale slaughter of millions of Jews? Ignorance, fear, madness, cowardice, you name it. Sometimes I ask myself, what if I had been the Pope back then? Would I have been brazen enough to excommunicate every Catholic man or woman who had any part in the Holocaust? And not just the upper Nazi echelon, but just every Nazi soldier of every rank who ever set foot in Auschwitz. I wasn't a pope, thank God. I just, you know, like most of the people, I just was too naive to believe that anyone could be that cruel. That 
human beings of a civilized nation would extinguish other human beings like insects. What about Edith? What did she think? I feel the weight of the cross, Father. His crown of thorns. His own humiliation. His humiliation? It was her humiliation. She just rounded up an Amherst fort, deported to the east. She should have escaped when escape was still possible. Why didn't she? Why did you mention Amherst fort? There were other transit camps for Jews rounded up in Holland. Leuven, Fürth, Mechelen, why Amersfoort? Why you was that true? Did you meet the paper like the Times has access to a lot of facts? You know, you can't go to hell for life. Answer my question. Why didn't Edith escape when she still could? Because she would never do anything like that. She could never. She couldn't abandon her own people. It would have been like abandoning Jesus on the night of his passion. Didn't the apostles do that? Oh, yes, they did. Because they were bitter, afraid. They felt betrayed. I can tell you, I too was bitter after my fall. Seems like you still got a way to go. Yeah. I was even thinking of leaving the priesthood. But, uh, God doesn't appreciate quitters. Maybe that's the reason why Edith stayed and entered the Kama, with a slight detour, that is. Baruch Ata Adunai, Eloheilem Melech Halam, Sheakol Miyave Bidbaro, Shema Yisrael, Adunai Eloheinu, Adunai Echad. Amen. After the meal, I spent that evening with my mother until I brought her to bed, feeling the weight of her sorrow.
It is time. Lord, you have called me by my name. Behold, I come to do your holy will. Dear daughter, what do you desire? One thing I have asked of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. pondered well what you wish to commit yourself to do. I have, by the grace of God. Are you prepared to follow the Son of Man, your spouse, completely until the end? I am, by the grace of God. In preparation for the perpetual vows which you are about to pronounce, I invite you now to renounce all actual and moral right to own anything on the heaven. I, Edith Stein, promise to observe for the whole of my life the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ by living in obedience without property and in chastity unto death. these monstrous laws at Nuremberg, stripping us of our citizenship, of our citizenship. How dare they? We Jews have been in Germany longer than you Germans, since the second century. Look! The marriages between Jews and citizens of German or kindred blood are strictly forbidden. How dare they? Not that it would have mattered. Not him. Hans would have... He really loved me, you know. Is that why you answered, Carmel? Why you were so anxious? To cut short the uncertainty of what he would or would not have done? Is it, Edith? Of course not, Father. What a silly thing to say. It's nothing of the sort. My vocation, my mission in life, our mission as Christians. We cannot allow this to happen right under our noses. The Holy Father must act immediately. I must tell him. Holy Father, as a child of the Jewish people, as well as being for the past 12 years a child of the Catholic Church. I dare to speak to the father of Christianity about that which oppresses millions of Germans. 
For years, the leaders of National Socialism have been preaching hatred of the Jews. And now that they have seized power and armed their followers, this seed of hatred has germinated. Everything that continues to happen on a daily basis originates with a government which calls itself Christian. We, who see the conditions in Germany with open eyes, fear the worst for the prestige of the Church if your holiness silence continues any longer. If the responsibility must fall on National Socialism, it must also fall on those who keep silent in the face of such happenings. Do you think Edith ever forgave the Church for doing so little? She made up for what the Church lacked. She was one of the few who stood up to the Nazis right to the very end. What happened? As the political situation worsened for the Jews, I met with some of my family. The young man who wrote to you from France. What was his name? Hans. Hans Lips, mother. They visited me to discuss their plans for immigration. And though they begged me to follow, I refused. She was baptized in winter of the same year and joined Edith in the Carmel. Rosa became a nun? No. I believe after her mother's death, when the Stein family broke apart, Rosa found herself alone in the world, alone with Edith. And she became her greatest ally at the time when Edith was finally to leave her homeland forever.
Commandant Ben Leitner. I'm Sister Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. What can we do for you, Sister? I'm a nun living in the Carmel of Echt. Bones? Due to my ethnic origins, I thought it might be wise to inform the Commandant that I live here, in Echt. If there are any consequences to my being here, to my being a Jew, please deal directly with me. Please leave my companions in Christ alone. <laughs> Amazing. An honorable Jew. We already know you're here, sister. Give me the folder from Echt. end of the year with uh, Rosenstein. Correct. I've made all the arrangements this afternoon. Switzerland is out of the question. It is strictly close to immigrants, especially Jews. So I've made other plans for you. A car will take you to Madame Blick, here. Jesuit priest Father Alting will meet you at the port where a tugboat will take you to Kungsbacher here in Sweden. You'll be safe there until the Jesuits find some other transport for America. You will give this to the tugboat captain. This is the amount they told me. Don't let him cheat you, not a penny more. <laughs> Understand? I see mother wasn't the only merchant's daughter in the family. Concentrate, Rosa. This is important. Edith, my beloved sister, what makes you think I would ever escape without you? But you must, Rosa. I dragged you into this whole thing. If it hadn't been for me, you'd be with Erna in America, safe and... Come with me, then. I'm sure Father Alting has room for two. We've been over this. I cannot leave. My place is here. This is mine. By this whole thing, I suppose you mean baptism. You're special, Edith. But you're not Christ. And Christ is the reason I'm here, not you. My sacrifice may not be as impressive as yours, but in my own small way, I'm also needed to intercede on behalf of the children of Israel. Your name's Edith Stein, born in 1891, Breslau. What's your nationality? German. Your race? Jewish. Your father's race? Jewish. Your mother's race? Jewish. Your grandmother's race? Jewish. Your grandfather's race? Jewish. Your great-grandmother's race? Jewish. Your great-grandfather's race? Jewish. Why did you become a nun? To serve Christ. Then they were released for the time being, but forced to wear yellow stars. The Nazis were sadistic like that. Cats playing with their mice before the death blow. Of course, Edith knew all this. That's why she asked me to witness this. Her last will and testament. I joyfully accept and advance the death which God has appointed for me. In perfect submission to his most holy will, may the Lord accept my life and death for the honor and glory of his name, for the needs of his holy church, and for the Jewish people. So that was the end. Not yet. She had to give the church one last push in the right direction. 
She wrote to Archbishop Waltz and urged him and other European bishops to do what the Pope had found inconvenient. She suggested that time was running out because, as she put it, the experiences of these last few years have laid bare intrigues which from the outset are clearly only aimed at a war of extermination. She wrote that? Extermination? Yes. And now Walzer and the others could no longer pretend to be deaf to Edith Christ. They had to speak out against Hitler. And this time, her message got through with a backlash that cost her her life. Benedictus fructus ventris tu, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis Adonai, Roy, Oechsar, Gam ki ele, Ki geit al mavis, Lo ira ra, Ki ata ki madi. go now, our people. Thank you for this precious day, Bishop. I learned a lot about two very special people, Edith and you. Michael, where? Where did you see Edith? Amersfoort, August 2nd. My mother had just turned 29. I was seven. Go on. I understand. So go with God. Doesn't seem like I have much choice around here. Uncle, he never married? I'm not sure. My mother mentioned she was engaged to a Jewish woman once, but the Nuremberg laws made marrying her impossible. What do you know about his private life? Not much. He was very, um, how do you say, um, zurückhaltend. Reserved. Yes. Uh, but mother mentioned something about a book he was writing before he went to the war. Was it ever published? No. Um, but I have the original manuscript. Here. May I? Please. I set out to mesh my life with her own, as it were. Not being a religious man, I opted to avoid a journey to Catholicism or Judaism for that matter, but focused on Edith's other great passion, phenomenology. 
I became one of Germany's most prominent philosophers, rubbing elbows with the likes of Heidegger. Certainly had no problem with self-esteem. I can see why she fell for you. I should have made clear that Hitler's world would have never stood in our way. We could have had a life elsewhere. There was so much I needed to tell her when I sought her out on her train. The ultimate leave-taking is the leaving of God and for God. Meister Eckert, 1260 to 1327. But then who am I to quote philosophers to you? Hans, what are you doing here? I'm stubborn, remember? I'm not giving up on you, is it? But I wrote telling you. Yes, yes, I know. Vows, chastity, calm, like none. I got the letter. Now, you know, I've done some reading up on that. This whole nun thing was never an impediment in the Middle Ages. Take the Ursuline sisters of Loudun, France. 1633 it was. <laughs> I'm full of numbers today, aren't I? Story goes, the prioress of the monastery, Jeanne des Anges by name. I like that. Des Anges. Rolls right off the top. Anyway. She appears to have been of unstable temperament, possessed actually, as in diabolically, but... The... Hans! Please do... do this to me. If you know how I feel... what I feel... for you... please don't do this to me. just have to find someone else, that's all. The deus ex machina would erase from my mind any thought of either. Meanwhile, you found your own real deus ex machina, haven't you? Haven't you? That's it, then. Who knows if there's ever another war we find ourselves sharing another trench. Another kiss. Hans! I feel very much the same way.
be her business. I need to understand her heart, what she felt, fear, regret, anger. Love, Michael. She felt love. I've seen the diary. Yes, the copy I gave you. No, Erna. I've seen Hans's diary. Hans. In Munich. His deepest thoughts buried in some forsaken attic. And it had all of that fear, regret, anger. And so much love. Having seen into his heart, I need to know what was in Edith's. Those last few days. This love that she felt, was it for Hans? Or was, was it for them? Oh, God. Both, Michael. Both. I have something for you. These are the last letters Edith wrote. The last that I knew. I've shown them to no one. Not even brightly. I get them from my safe deposit box after our last meeting. I wanted to share them with you. I knew you'd be back. Francis Clare forwarded it to me along... along with the other letters. Edith never had a chance to post. The night is something of nature. The opposite of light enveloping us and all things. It is not an object in the true sense of the word. The night is invisible and formless, and yet we perceive it. Just as light causes things to stand out, so the night swallows us up into its blackness. It condemns us to solitude and makes our own selves shadowy and ghost-like. The night is a fortress of death. It is not an object in the true sense of the word. The night is invisible and formless. And yet we perceive it just as light causes things to stand out. So the night swallows us up into its blackness. The night is a foretaste of death.
Dear Francis Clare, a prioress from one of the monasteries arrived last evening with a suitcase for her daughter and God. She now offers to take some short letters along, including this one. Early tomorrow, a transport leaves for Silesia or Czechoslovakia. What is most necessary for us are woolen socks, two blankets, for Rosa, all the warm underwear, and whatever she has in her laundry. There is no way of knowing how long they will keep us. We've helped you, Michael. Told you about Edith. Now, why don't you help us? Tell me, Michael, about those last couple of days. Those last few hours, they're so precious to all of us who loved her. I was born in Bremen. 1935. After Crystal knocked in 39, my father and mother fled with me to Holland. I was too small to understand. We were scared. I could smell it. July 42, we were captured at Emmen. Tagged for deportation. My mother was eight months pregnant. Oh, my God. God. No. No, God wasn't there in Amersfoort. The three of us were held in that transit camp until the first week in August. He made us board a train. One, two, 
Jesus. One, two, three, push. You look like a strong boy. What is your name? Michael. Beautiful name. The name of an archangel. Do you think you could squeeze through there? When you get through it, jump down to the ground. It's summer now, so it's soft. You'll be all right. Just try to fall on your feet. And once you hit the ground, roll onto your side and keep rolling. Understand? But what about Mammy? You're doing this for her and for your sister. She would have wanted you to do this. She loved you. But we must hurry. We're not far away from the camp. The train will be slowing soon. It will make it all easier. Just remember, once you hit the ground, run. Run into the forest as fast as you can and as far away from this train. Edith Stein promised to observe for the whole of my life the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ by living in obedience without property 
unto death. And who might you be, little man? Come. Is the war over? Yes. Loss. Everyone. Nationality? Polish. Name? Michael. Last name? Prager. Michael Prager.
How can you be bitter about losing something which may have never been yours?